across the total known as lithosphere is warning about a shift in the Earth's inner core. That in volcanic rocks on Canada's Baffin Island, scientists have found a surprisingly high concentration of helium-3, a rare form of the noble gas. This discovery supports the hypothesis that the gas has been leaking from Earth's core for millennia. Helium-4 was also found in the rocks by the research team. Scientists were taken aback to discover a higher concentration of helium-3 in the rocks on Baffin Island than had previously been reported. While helium-4 is prevalent on Earth, helium-3 is more easily found elsewhere in the universe. A research outlining the finding was just released in the journal Nature. Lead study author Forrest Horton, an associate scientist in the Geology and Geophysics Department at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, stated via email that, at the most basic level, there is little 3HE, helium-3, in the universe compared to 4HE, helium-4. According to Horton, 3HE is rare on Earth because it is lost to space and has not been produced on or added to the planet in significant quantities. Material rises, cools, and sinks as the rocky part of Earth stirs and convex like hot water on a stove top. Helium is lost to space and then the atmosphere during the cooling phase. Scientists can learn more about how our planet developed and changed over time by detecting elements that leak out of its core. The new research supports an existing theory about how our world came to be. The largest island in Canada is Baffin Island, which is part of Nunavut Territory. Furthermore, it is the world's fifth largest island. During her PhD research, under the direction of Finlay Stewart, a physicist at the University of Edinburgh, Solveig Lass Evans discovered a high ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 in volcanic rocks from Baffin Island. In 2003, their research was published in the journal Nature. The elements that made up a planet are reflected in its composition. Previous studies have revealed that helium-3, which is present in trace amounts in Earth's core, lends credence to the widely held belief that the planet formed in a solar nebula, which was a cloud of gas and dust that collapsed as a result of a nearby supernova explosion. When Horton and his associates carried out research on Baffin Island in 2018, they investigated the lava that erupted millions of years ago when Greenland and North America split away, creating a new seafloor. This was a step beyond early research. Their goal was to examine the rocks because they might hold secrets about what lies beneath the surface of the Earth, in the mainly solid mantle and core. The secluded, surreal scenery of the island, where lava flows have sculpted tall cliffs, enormous icebergs drift by, and polar bears prowl the shoreline, was reached by the researchers via helicopter. According to Horton, the researchers received access, guidance, and bear protection from local groups including the Chikitani Inuit Association and Nunavut Research Institute. He stated, This area on Baffin Island holds special importance as a scientific window into the deep earth and as sacred lands for the local communities. Helium-3 and helium-4 values in the Arctic rocks that Horton and his team studied were surprisingly greater than those found in earlier studies, and the measurements varied among the samples they obtained. Breaking off fresh pieces with a rock hammer was as thrilling as breaking apart geodes as a kid. Each rock was a treasure to be discovered, Horton said. Many of the lavas are full of bright green olivine, also known as the gemstone peridot. And what discoveries they proved to be, treasures for science. According to Horton, there are only roughly one helium-3 atom for every million helium-4 atoms. About 10 million helium-3 atoms were detected by the team in one gram of olivine crystals. According to him, our high 3HE, 4HE measurements imply that gases are better preserved in Earth than previously thought, presumably inherited from the solar nebula during solar system formation. However, how did the helium-3 originally get into the rocks? The Big Bang, which formed the cosmos and also emitted a large amount of hydrogen and helium, could be the starting point for the answer. Over time, these components were included into the process of galaxy formation. According to scientific theory, a solar nebula is where our solar system originated about 4.5 billion years ago. NASA claims that as the dust cloud collapsed in a supernova, the material left behind created a whirling disk that eventually gave rise to the planets and our sun. As the planet formed, 
Helium that was inherited from the solar nebula most likely got trapped in the Earth's core, turning it into a store of noble gases. Helium-3 began to seep from the core and rose to the surface through the mantle as plumes of magma that eventually erupted on Baffin Island. According to Horton, the vast majority of the gases in the magma escaped to the atmosphere during the eruption. The helium from the deep earth was only trapped and preserved by the olivine crystals that grew prior to eruption. Although the exact start date of the process is unknown, the new discovery lends credence to the theory that helium-3 is, and has been, leaking from Earth's core for some time. The ascent of the mantle plume took perhaps tens of millions of years, and the lavas are about 60 million years old, stated Horton. Therefore, it is possible that the helium we measured in these rocks left the core considerably earlier than 100 million years ago. He argued that there is no harm or consequence to our world from helium escaping from the Earth's core. Neither the environment nor humankind will be impacted by noble gas because it does not chemically react with matter, in order to understand why Earth's outer core is less dense than anticipated, the study team plans to look into whether the core is a repository for more light components. Is the core a significant storehouse of elements that are crucial to the habitability of the planet, such as hydrogen and carbon? If yes, how had planetary evolution been affected by these elements' flexes from the core over the course of Earth's history? According to Horton, I am eager to look into connections between helium and other light elements. Maybe helium can be utilized to monitor other elements beyond the core mantle divide. Meanwhile, scientists found an evidence of a new core at the center of the Earth. Scientists have found evidence of another core in the Earth's center by examining the seismic waves produced by earthquakes. The innermost inner core is the term used to describe this new layer that sits at the center of Earth's inner core. A recent study that was published in the journal Nature Communications claims that the speed of seismic waves varies as they move through this area. This observed change indicates that the texture or structure of the innermost orb has altered. Scientists are still baffled by the composition of Earth's inner core, a hot metal bowl that stretches 1,500 miles across. It's quite challenging to investigate because of the thousands of miles of rock that separate it from the planet's surface. The Australian National University's Than Sun Fan, the lead author, tells Reuters Will Dunham, We may know more about the surface of other, distant celestial bodies than the deep interior of our planet. However, scientists are uncovering more information about the Earth's core by employing seismic waves that travel very deep within the planet. Based on observations of these waves, scientists first proposed in 2002 that there might be an additional layer inside the planet's core. As Kenneth Chang of the New York Times reports, however, the data accessible to scientists at the time was scarce. The authors of the paper explain in the conversation that in order to detect a seismic wave carrying data from the Earth's core, they needed sensors placed on the other side of the planet from the earthquake, and these locations are frequently in the middle of the ocean. The waves that reflected back toward the epicenter of the earthquake from the opposite side of the planet could be seen by the researchers thanks to this new publication. The feeble signals of these rebounding waves can be detected by researchers thanks to the recent installation of more seismic sensors and the combination of their power. Certain waves reverberated throughout the planet, sometimes passing through the inner core up to five times. As the waves moved through the innermost core, their speed varied according to the direction of the waves, according to Kasha Patel of the Washington Post. We strengthen the current evidence supporting the presence of the innermost core, FAM informs Stephanie Pappas of Scientific American. Though they both consist of an iron nickel alloy, the two hypothesized layers of Earth's inner core have different crystal structures, according to the Post. Despite this, they appear related. According to FAM, a Reuters reporter, the change from the inner to the innermost core appears to be slow. Seismologist Dan Frost of the University of South Carolina, who was not involved in the study, told Scientific American that the findings may not, however, support the existence of a clear transition. According to him, the magazine should not have split up the work into so many layers. In part, because of its impact on the evolution of life on Earth's surface, scientists investigate the Earth's core. The magnetic field of Earth is generated by a convection current in the liquid outer core, which is a result of the extreme heat in the inner core. By shielding humans from cosmic radiation, this magnetic field preserves life on Earth. As reported by The Post, the team's results could provide light on how the magnetic field developed. As Robert Swan says, 
The greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. You can suggest topics you want to see next in the comments section below. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world. And don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.